Oh, there. How about a motive? I think Linda's right. Somebody's after Spence. A man can carry a grudge for 26 years. He's gonna keep pressing till he scores. Well, if Wicks right, that bomb's set to go off, but we don't know the altitude. You're going back to prison, pal, without doing what you set out to do. That's where you're wrong. It's done. And there's nothing you or you can do about it. Nothing anybody can do about it. The suspense is gonna die. He's gonna die today. <laughs> Be out there too long. Jim, you're a madman. 26 years of my life I spent in this place. And there are only two things that kept me from becoming a madman. One is that I'd get out of here someday. And the other one, that I'd kill Spencer Parrish. 26 years is a long time to carry a grudge. Guard! Hey, you're kidding. You got it. Got what? Come on. How'd you guys get it? Well, Murdoch's out of town. He can't make the race, and uh, besides, he owes me one. Spencer, you really in that race? Yep. He's too old to be flying a sailplane. Yeah, he is, but they give him a handicap. See, they, they divide the length of the sailplane by how old he is. All right, all right. Hi. Hello. I'm uh, sorry to interrupt you, but uh, I was looking for somebody to help me. What you need? Uh, well, you see, I'm new around here, and I saw a sign over at the cafe. It said, uh, help wanted. And I just wondered if it was a good place to work. Yeah, it's a nice place. They could use some help. <laughs> Where are you from? Oh, um, Ken City. Oh, no kidding. I got some relatives on the Missouri side. Uh -huh. Name's Wig. Oh, Hank. Clerk. Get that, Wig. That scared me. Spencer Aviation. Yeah, just a sec. Spence, it's for you. Always is when he doesn't answer it himself. <laughs> Wait, I need a rawhide mallet. All right. Hi. Hey, hello. Yeah, speaking. Yes, Mr. Schwartz. Yeah, well, if the weather's OK up there. All right, then. I'll get away from here around 3 o'clock. OK, I'll see you then. Pretty sailplane. Thanks. Going to fly that in the race on Sunday. Good luck. Thanks. How you doing, Father? Hi, Father. Uh, innkeeper, coffee, please, and put these boys on my check. We must have done something right. You are looking at a man who is about to take his first cross-country flight. 
Congratulations. Terrific. Tomorrow, my instructor, Mr. Parrish, and I will be ETDing at 0800 hours. That's pilot talk for estimated time of departure. Is that uh, 8 a.m.? Right. You fly. Well, uh, I used to. I say you're new here. My name is Stan Lewis. Oh, uh, Hank McClure. Hi, Hank. Hi, Casca. Nice to have you, boy. This is Father Heller. Uh -huh. Nice to meet you. Listen, you taking the train in? No, Spence and I are taking the brand new plane. Three five oh. Julia, you're getting the first class treatment. Spence is just playing it safe. He thinks when he goes, I can get him in. <laughs> <laughs> Soft scrambled and coffee. I got across country in 20 minutes. Spence? Pete? Pete Waltz. Good Lord! How long has it been? Six years? Well, it's been at least six years. What are you doing here? Making a plane delivery to Orange County. Had a little engine trouble having it checked out. Hey, come on, join me, huh? Sure. Hey, tell me. What do you think of the charter business for now? It's good. Opening an operation in Maui next week. Leaving tomorrow. Maui? Hey, that's great. How'd you swing that? Well, oh, that is a long story. Yeah. I got a cross country in 20 minutes. Oh, now, hey, couldn't somebody else take him? We haven't had a chance to swap lies in years. You wait here. You mean I get my choice? Well, of course, Cass and Stan are wonderful pilots, but uh, Linda's uh, also good and uh, much more fun to look at. The father has excellent taste. But That's in poor it. flying skills. I know Make sure he keeps his eyes on his charts. Board. He's a lousy navigator. Yeah, and watch his landings. He's still a little shaky. God helps those who help Oh, them. shut up. Not at all. Well, thanks again, Father. I really appreciate it. Bye. Hank. Put a couple of strips of bacon on that order. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank hey, you. Good morning, Father. Oh, she's a Good beauty. Luck. Let's go through the ground checks. Right. A new plane for the bouncing Padre? They need breaking in. Yeah, but not literally. He's coming along fine. Oh, yeah. Allow me. Why, thank you. See you later, guys. Good luck, Father. Bye, Father. See you later, Father. Don't worry, Wig. The bouncing Padre will bring her back in good shape. All right, who told him? Hey, it's hard to keep a secret from a priest. He's right. Okay, hold the tower. Bracket ground. This is 35 Juliet at Spencer Aviation. Taxi for takeoff. 35 Juliet cleared for taxi on runway 26. Wind 269 or at 5. Happy flying, Father. They know my voice. Yeah, that sounds great. I want you to get a look at our setup. It ain't Maui, but it's working.
Linda. Linda. I'll get an ambulance. Wait. I don't know what happened. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Sunshine. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Felt better. Oh, thank you. We talked to your doctor. He says you're a lucky young lady. Well, maybe there's something to be said about flying with the priest. <laughs> Do you remember anything? Just what I told the FAA inspectors this morning. They started to taxi and poof. The engine exploded. That's all there is to tell. Father Hiller thinks he caused it. That's ridiculous. He didn't do anything wrong. Ah, we know that. He's just shaken up. And I can't understand it. Brand new plane, that kind of explosion, just doesn't make any sense. Hey, you guys are going to think I'm nuts, but I got a little theory. Wig's still tearing the engine down. What's your theory? Sabotage. Sabotage? Who'd want to do that? I don't know, but it's an explanation, isn't it? No. Nothing's been found that indicates that. Now, wait a minute. Nothing's been found to disprove it, either. Spence, maybe someone has it in for one of us. Now, hold on, all three of you. This goof comes up with a harebrained idea, and you two jump right aboard. If this goof can have a word, I think that we shouldn't discount the possibility. That's something for the authorities to wrestle with, if they think your theory holds water. But until then, I don't want to hear that word sabotage again. Sabotage? Stan's idea. Think it makes any sense? Maybe. I've checked that engine from top to bottom. I wish I was in such good shape. Well, what other options are there? Faulty wiring? Fuel accumulation? I've covered them all, and a dozen more. Nothing. I know the fuel line exploded, but I don't know why. And if it was sabotage? If it was sabotage, whoever did it knew what he was doing. Ain't a trace of nothing in this mess. You know, Wig, sabotage is an ugly word, because it leads to an even uglier question. Ooh. I was dreaming about it all night long. Engines blowing up, saboteurs, international spies right here at Bracken. Stan. The thing I can't understand, though, is the wig not finding anything. I seen that guy catch things designers would miss. And it puts a hole in your theory, doesn't it? I don't know. The whole thing smells bad to me. Yeah, well, do me a favor. Keep your theory to yourself, huh? Sabotage is a touchy subject, especially around airports. Hank? Hey, Hi. Hey, you guys want some coffee? Yeah, please. Somebody could be trying to kill Father Heller. Or any one of us. Stan. You got any major enemies, buddy? I tell you, I got in a fight with a guy in Bakersfield about a month ago. He thought I was hitting on his girl. He ended up kicking on me. You think I'm paranoid? Let's keep your medical history out of this. Here you go. You guys uh, talking about that accident yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, it was terrible. I seen it from here. Oh, you saw the actual explosion? Oh, no. I, I was in here and I heard the explosion. I run outside and I see all this smoke coming out of the airplane. You guys want to know what I think? Sure. Flying ain't safe. I called Spence. He and Wig worked on that engine all night. Did he lay out his sailplane course? No. He's coming in after 8 o'clock tonight. You think there's any way we can talk him out of that sailplane race tomorrow? I'd like to see the guy get some rest. No, no, I think it's good therapy for him. Keeps his mind off his worries. We, uh, could go help him lay out his plan. Save him a few hours' work. Yeah, sure, we'll finish our checkout flight and then we'll get right on it. Let's go.
more hours on auto rotation. He freezes up on the collector. All right, I'll put him down for additional time. Boy, the second flight took us two hours. I hope Spence doesn't walk in on us. Well, if he does, he'll just have to smile and say thank you. It'd be easier for him to do his own flight plan. You're probably right. Let's see. Is Murdoch's plan at Canal 13? Yeah. Flight ratio is uh, 28 to 1 at 58 miles per hour. Max speed? 135. Old man's gonna do pretty good. Give me that flight computer. I think it's on Spence's desk. All right. You can figure that they'll release him at 2,000 feet, about uh, three miles north of Valley Meadows. Sorry, I'm wrong. It's on Linda's desk. That ought to put him over Daggett about 1,400 hours, and magnetic heading to 127 will bring him back to Valley Meadows, and the race is over. That does it. All he's got to do now is win the race. Come on, let's get this stuff together, put it on his desk, and get out of Okay. Oh, listen, I know it's after visiting hours, but I told Linda we'd sneak on up and say hi. Terrific. May I ask what you two are doing here at 9.30? Well, we just had a little work to catch up on. Well, I just got back from the hospital, and it wouldn't have hurt you two to stop by and say hello to Linda. The work could have waited. What was it, anyway? Well, we uh, thought we'd give you a little head start on your homework for the race tomorrow. Seeing as you've been so preoccupied and all. Oh. Well, it's times like this I'm glad my mouth's so big because it gives me some place to put my foot. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate it. Now you ought to go home and get yourself a good night's rest. As a matter of fact, because of this, I'm going to drive on up to Valley Meadows, check in a motel, and save myself a trip in the morning. Now, that's good thinking, boss. You see, you need your sleep. I mean, a man your age ought to be... I ought to be what? You ought to be letting your two younger pilots hitch up your sailplane trailer for you. Isn't that right, partner? You started this tap dance. You finish it.
Spencer Aviation, may I help you? No, Cass is up flying, I'm sorry. Yeah, wig's in the hangar. I'll put you on hold here. Hey, Stan, I want to show you something. Okay, you got a call on line one. Okay, I'll take it to Spencer's office. And I want to show you something. But he'll be all right. All right, I'll be here. You'll be able to see him in a moment. I just spoke to my fireman at your office. He said there's a gas pipe on the wall behind Parrish's desk. Do you recall a gas odor? No, nothing like that. Well, if it wasn't a gas pipe, then what was it? I don't know yet. Unless some lunatic threw a bomb in there. Inspector Garrison, telephone. Excuse me. Floor nurse told me there was another explosion. Is he all right? Yeah. Wig's fine. How you doing? I'm okay. They're letting me go home this afternoon. Hey, you guys. What's going on? I wish we knew. Well, you can go in now. Thank you. Oh, hi. Well, I figured you'd get lonely around here, so I decided to drop in for a few days and keep you company. How's it going? I'd singe some of my hair off. I could hardly afford that. We've either had some strange coincidences around here where Stan's theory is starting to sound reasonable. Hey, hold it. How about a motive? Blowing up an airplane and then the boss's office. Spence's office? That's where the explosion was? Yeah. I wasn't supposed to fly Father Heller that day. Spence was. Listen, when I went in to see you guys this morning, it was because I'd found something, a small piece of metal in the debris, the U.S. Air Force markings. It looked like a... Uh, incendiary container, World War II type. I think Linda's right. Somebody's after Spence. Well, whoever set those explosives had easy access to Spencer Aviation. There was no sign of a break-in. They had to have a key. How could anybody get the keys? Look, how do I know? My Jeep. What? Your Jeep? What about your Jeep? New guy at the diner, Hank. He borrowed my Jeep. The keys to the office and the hangar are on my key ring. Did he have time to make a duplicate set? Sure he did. Smitty, this is Stan. You got that guy Hank there? No, I haven't seen him. Give me his phone number, will you? All right, give me his address. Thanks. Hank didn't show up for work today. He's got no phone, but I got his address. Call Valley Meadows. Warren Spence, what's going down, just in case. Let's get out of here. Hey, you guys be careful.
important. Look, there's 20 planes in this race, and there's a lot of confusion here. I don't have time to go out on a manhunt. Couldn't you get someone else to find him? He's flying John Murdoch's sailplane. Yeah, well, maybe he's in the air already. Did you ever think about that? L listen, you're going to have to hang on a minute. Wait a minute. How you doing, Mr. Parrish? <laughs> oh, Hank, what are you doing up here? Uh, came to see the race and wish you luck. Oh, that's awful nice of you. Been waiting a long time for this one. Yeah, I know that feeling, Mr. Parrish. You plan something for a long time, and then when that day comes, you're ready. It's your day. It's all been worth it. Yeah, that's pretty much the way it is. I gotta get going, Hank. Thanks for seeing me off. Have a good flight, Spencer. Life and death. I want Spencer Parrish called to this phone, and I don't want any more excuses. Is that clear? Okay, lady, I'll get him for you if I can. Has he got a radio in the sailplane? Just a minute. Does he have a radio in the sailplane? No. No. Look, if, if the plane is taken off, there's nothing I can do for you. Joanne, go out there and see if you can find a pilot named Spencer Parrish. Hurry. Five minutes ago. There's no way I can contact him. I'm sorry. this dump to let us in. We're lucky he gave us the apartment number. Let's not push it. That joker eats guys like us for lunch. How's your shoulder? Ready, Chief? Geronimo. <laughs> Come here. 
Army Air Force Tech Sergeant James Bailey was sentenced to 26 years in prison after being found guilty of first-degree murder. Key witness in the case, Captain Spencer Parrish, testified he was duty officer on the night Bailey, a demolitions expert, blew up an Army warehouse, killing one soldier and wounding another. I'd never know that was Spence. Hank has got to be Bailey. This nails it. Look, it doesn't even look like him. Well, after 26 years, no wonder Spence didn't recognize him. Hey, we gotta call the cops. There's no phone. Well, come on, we'll get the one. Yes, Sheriff. Jim Bailey. Yeah, he's going under the name of Hank McClure. Get some men out to Valley Meadows fast. I'm sure that's where he is. And tell him to hang back till we get some information from him. Thank you. Is that the Sheriff? Yeah, he's sending a unit out there. The blanket's ready. Let's go. Yeah, Spencer Aviation. Yeah, Linda? They couldn't reach Spence. He's flying. That might be the safest place for him. I wish that were true. Ho hold on a minute. The wig wants to speak to you. Stan, listen, if, uh, if Spence is flying, it means that Hank hasn't gotten to him yet. But Hank knows that he's in that race. What are you getting at, Wig? Listen, I, I want you to go into the hangar and look on the parts table near the metal press. The day before the explosion, I was working on an altimeter there. Would you check it and see if it's still there? What's that got to do with it? Just a, a hunch. Uh, something came to my mind. He wants me to check an altimeter on his bench. I'll talk to him. Hey, what's up, Wing? Yeah, Cass, uh, listen, it's just a, a wild thought, but uh, a few years ago, a plane had to land in Denver when they discovered that a bomb had been rigged to the altimeter. Now, it was set to, to go off at 5,000 feet. Well, Denver's at 6,000 feet. That's what saved him. What are you getting at? Look, Hank has tried to kill him twice now and failed. If he was in that hangar last night, there's a good chance... You might try to get Spence the same way. Listen, the man's insane. He's capable of anything. Hey, there's no altimeter on his desk. I, I heard him. Are you guys going out there? We're on our way. Maybe he split after his bomb attempt didn't work last night. He's there. If a man can carry a grudge for 26 years, he's gonna keep pressing till he scores. Well, if Wiggs right, that bomb's set to go off, but we don't know the altitude. It may have already. I better call Valley Meadows. We're gonna be landed in six minutes.
you doing here, Jim? Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's me, Hank. I'm not Jim. What are you guys doing? Your name is Jim Bailey, man. I can prove it. All right, so what? I mean, I didn't do nothing. Okay. You guys leave me alone. All right. You got a set of duplicate keys from Wig. That's how you put the explosives in the plane. That's how you get into Spencer's office. You're fishing, pal. And nobody's biting. You're going back to prison, pal, without doing what you set out to do. You're dumb, Hank. That's where you're wrong. It's done. And there's nothing you or you can do about it. Nothing anybody can do about it. Spence knew about it from the beginning. Why do you think he wasn't in the plane that morning? Why do you think he wasn't in the office at night? Ah, you guys are crazy. You kept him out of that room. He didn't know anything about it. No, you're crazy. We did know, and Spence knew, too. Pressure bombs don't work on sailplanes, Hank, because the variometer overrides the altimeter. Or don't you know about variometers? Oh, variometer? What are you talking about? Listen, Spence is going to die. He's going to die today. My and day! Bakersfield. He's been there for an hour and a half. You want to call him? I can get him on the phone That's for That's impossible. We found the bomb you rigged to the altimeter. It was dumb to set it for 7,000 feet in terrain like this. 5,000 feet! 5,000 feet! Maybe you had no, a chance! No, 3,000 feet! Now I set it for 3,000! Thanks. The guy you've been looking for. Look, there's a sailplane in the air, number 94613. Get a police chopper up there and make him maintain altitude. Let's go. Start it up. I'll catch up with you. All right. There you go. Thank you, miss. Excuse me. Hey, what can you I'll do? I'll explain later. Pressure bomb on Spencer's plane. If he's holding to the flight plan we worked out, he ought to be about three miles due east on a heading of 250. If he got good thermals. And if he was able to maintain altitude. There won't be anything to look for if he hasn't. There's the sheriff's chopper. Helicopter 807, this is Belanca, 30 Sierra. Do you read me? Over. 30 Sierra, this is 807. We're looking for a sailplane. Silver with black markings, number niner, 
Move it, Spence. Come on. Move it. Are you okay? Yeah, who was it? Old friend of yours, Jim Bailey. Jim Bailey. Jim Bailey. I'd never have recognized him. You ought to be dead. You wasted 26 years hating me for something you did. But more important, you almost killed innocent people to get back at me. For that, I ought to kill you myself. Hey, uh, about what happened up there? Thanks. Both of you. You're welcome, Spence. Tomorrow's payday. Who to sign the checks? Let's go home. Just make sure Linda drives slow, will you? I want you home tomorrow in one piece. Got it. What's that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he just walked in with it. Yeah, thanks. We might need it. Okay. All right, I'll see you tomorrow, Wig. Bye. All set? Oh, yeah. All we gotta do now is... Find somebody to deliver it for us. Hello, Father. Yes, Cass. Uh, would you give this box to Spence for us? What's in it? It's a surprise. Yeah, just tell him that a delivery man gave it to you. But a delivery man didn't give it to me. Well, it's just a little practical joke on Spence. You know, like when a bunch of you guys are hanging around the rectory and one guy says to another, hey, let's play a joke on the bishop. I've been hanging around that rectory for 18 years, and not one of the bunch has ever said, let's play a joke on the bishop. Well, let's take a different line of attack. How are you on Little White Lies? How little? Two Hail Marys? Forgive me. It's almost 2 o'clock, Spence. You got that plane all checked out, Father? Ready to go. Will you fly into a birthday party? Well, I ran into a messenger on the way in. He asked me to give you this. A messenger, huh? Aren't you going to open your package there, Spence? Mm. First place award for most original exit from sailplane at 3,000 feet. Did you really win that, Spence? Apparently. How did you do that? It's not an easy event, Father. I'll get you for this. Did you have much competition? No. No. <clears throat> I was the only one entered. <laughs> <laughs>